This is lesson three of topic five. Um, we didn't have a lesson two, and this will be the last lesson of topic five. In this lesson, we're going to be able to analyze and write what are called biconditional statements and also learn a new vocabulary word, which is negation. In the first lesson of Topic 5, the only other lesson of Topic 5, you found three conditional statements whose converses were also true. Remember, the converse is when you switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. You switch the if and the then, the then part. Let's look at this animation to explore a new type of statement that is called a biconditional statement. So the conditional statement and its converse that are shown here are both true statements. So the conditional statement says if C is on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB, then we know it's equidistant from the two endpoints. So AC is equal to CB. The converse of that would say if AC equals CB, then C is on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. That is also true. It wouldn't matter where you place C, even if you put it on segment AB as the midpoint, it would still be on the perpendicular bisector. So the conditional statement and its converse are both true statements. So we can see this um, as they go through this, showing you that those two distances are equal when we do the converse and switch the two we still have a true statement. So we can write this as a single statement that says that both of these um, statements are true, and that is called a biconditional statement. So the way we do that is we take the hypothesis and the conclusion and put this phrase if and only if in between them. So we would read this as C is on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB, if and only if AC equals CB. So anytime you see this phrase, if and only if, that is telling you that you have a biconditional statement, meaning the conditional statement and its converse are both true statements. So the order you write the biconditional statement doesn't matter. We could have put the AC equals CB part first and then said if and only if, the C is on the um, perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So the order doesn't matter in a biconditional statement. Let's look at these two statements. The conditional statement says if today is Tuesday, then yesterday was Monday. The converse would be if yesterday was Monday, then today is Tuesday. So how would we put those together as a biconditional statement? So remember, we're going to take the statements if today is Tuesday, You take off the if part and then add this phrase if and only if and take the conclusion with yesterday was Monday. So notice in the biconditional form we don't have the if in front of the hypothesis and the then in front of the con um, conclusion. We just take the phrase um, that is beside the if and then and put the phrase if and only if between them. So today is Tuesday if and only if yesterday was Monday. Or remember the order doesn't matter, so you could write yesterday was Monday if and only if today is Tuesday. So on your notes, on number one, it says when the statements if P then Q and if Q then P are both true, we can combine the conditional and its converse into one saying and say P if and only if Q. And that is called a biconditional statement. So that's your answer to number one, biconditional statement. Again, you don't have the if in front of P or the then in front of Q. You just have the other part of the statement and put the phrase if and only if in between them. On question two, we combined um, two different statements that were an original statement and then the converse that were both true into biconditional form. So remember you're going to take the hypothesis which is this part. Remember you don't use the word if so we're going to write it, C is on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. 
And then we're going to use the phrase if and only if. In higher math classes, we shorthand this phrase by writing I, if with two Fs. So if you ever see this, I with two Fs, that's what that means, if and only if. And then our conclusion, AC equals CB. So again, we don't use the word if or then. We just use the hypothesis and conclusion with the phrase if and only if. Again, the order doesn't matter, so you could have written AC equals CB if and only if C is on the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Our second statement we looked at in the animation was if today is Tuesday, then yesterday was Monday. So we could write that together as a biconditional statement by saying today is Tuesday if and only if yesterday was Monday. So just stressing again, you do not use the words if and then when you are writing a biconditional statement. All right, so here are a few things to keep in mind when you are in the land of logic. Remember that only the sentences you can analyze are called statements. Sentences that are either true or false, but not both. A statement may be true some of the time, but if it is not true all of the time, then from a logical standpoint, it is false. So, for example, the statement, if an animal is a mammal, then it is a dog, is definitely true some of the time, but not all the time. So, for example, we found with Trio the squirrel that it's not true all the time because Trio the squirrel is also a mammal, but definitely not a dog. So the statement overall is considered false, even if you can only come up with one counter um, example. Also remember, if I can find my cursor here to move this, that a conditional statement may be true or false, and the same can be said about its converse. So when you switch the hypothesis and the conclusion, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to keep its truth value. So an original conditional statement can be true and its converse be false or an original condition, conditional statement could be false and its converse be true. Sometimes they have the same truth value. They can both be true or they can both be false. So when they are both true, remember you can combine them into one statement called a biconditional, but that's only when both the conditional and its converse are both true. Negation is a term we want to learn today, and the negation of a statement is a statement that you form by denying some other statement. So you can often negate a statement by simply inserting the word not. So for example, um, this statement here, G-O is a dog, we can negate, negate that by simply adding the word not and saying G-O is not a dog. Same with trio is a squirrel, trio is not a squirrel. Okay, so if the statement originally has the word not in it, you wouldn't add another not. We call that a double negative. So, for example, in the statement, I am not fooling around, you would not say, I am not not fooling around. That's called a double negative. So, if the not is already in the statement, you simply take it away to make it be the negation. So, the statement, the tractor is not orange, the negation would be the tractor is orange. So, just take out the word not. So um, the truth value means whether it's true or false. So if a statement is true, then we say its truth value is it's true. But if a statement is true, then the truth value of its negation would have to have the opposite. So they can't both be true. We can't say Geo is a dog and Geo is not a dog. It mm -hmm. is either a dog or it's not. So if Geo is a dog is a true statement, then its negation would have to be false. Um, so if a statement is originally false, then the truth value of its negation would be true. So a statement and its negation have to have opposite truth values. They would contradict each other otherwise. So the conditional form of statements we've been studying is really important because it helps us when we start looking at proofs, which we've been looking at. So in a proof, the hypothesis part is your given and the conclusion part is your what you're trying to prove. So for example, in the vertical angle theorem that we've solved a couple of times, the, the vertical angle theorem says, 
if two lines are intersecting forming vertical angles, then the angles have the same measure. So the if part, the two lines intersecting forming vertical angles would be your given, and the fact that the angles have equal measures would be what you're trying to prove. Okay, so the if, which is the hypothesis, is the given, and the then, the conclusion, is what you're trying to prove. So we can see here highlighted in blue, it would be what we would be given, and what has highlighted in yellow would be what we're trying to prove. So this topic five has introduced you to some basic components of formal logic. We've seen that there's a difference between a sentence and a statement. So a sentence can have often many different interpretations, but a statement can only be true or false, not both at the same time. So we've studied conditional statements, which are if-then form, and we've learned to represent their structure using both logic notation and Euler diagrams. So remember, this is logic notation when you have um, a, your hypothesis um, represented by the variable P here with an arrow, meaning it's implying a conclusion, which we use Q for. Euler's diagram kind of reminds us of a Venn diagram, but instead of overlapping, one circle is completely inside the other. So this would be if P, this circle, then Q, because it's part of Q's circle. So if you have a dog, then it is also a mammal. But of course, we have mammals out here that are not dogs. The converse, remember, is simply switching the hypothesis and conclusion. So the if part becomes the then part, and the then part becomes the if part. So if we are had a conditional statement, if an animal is a dog, then it is a mammal. The converse would be, if an animal is a mammal, then it is a dog. So in this case, the conditional statement is true, but the converse is false. So what did we learn today? Here's a conditional statement that we're gonna assume is true. If it is raining, then I will bring an umbrella. So if I wanted to write the converse, then remember that bringing the umbrella would be the if part, and that it being raining outside would be the then part. So we would write that, if I bring an umbrella, then it is raining. So that might not necessarily be true, right? I might bring umbrellas on days that it's sunny, but um, so that could be possibly false. So what would the converse look like if we negated the hypothesis and the conclusion? So here's our converse. Remember, negating would add the word not when it's not there. So I would write that as, if I do not bring an umbrella, then it is not raining. Would this statement be true if we assume if I bring in an umbrella, then it is raining? Would this be true if I do not bring an umbrella, then it is not raining? Yes, because if it's raining, I do bring an umbrella. So this new statement would also be true. Look at this condition, this algebra statement. If x equals 7, then 2x minus 5 equals 9. Is it a biconditional statement? Could we write it the opposite way? If 2x minus 5 equals 9, then x equals 7. Well, if we solve this by adding 5 to both sides and then dividing by 2, we would get x equals 7. So yes, this is a biconditional statement. Um, we can read that in both ways. All right, I wanna point out a couple things on your homework before we stop um, this video. On numbers one through five, these are the things that you're going to be inserting into your Euler's diagram. Now the directions tell you up here that when you insert those in to make sure that you fill up the parts of the diagram in order. So for example, if you're gonna say one, two, and three are all part of the large oval, don't put two, three, one. Put them in numerical order, one, two, three. On the rest of the worksheet, you have a lot of things that say converse. So I just wanna draw your attention to that. Um, so it says fill in the blanks to fill the converse. Um, which part of the Euler diagram is a counterexample that proves the converse is false? And for each statement, tell whether the conditional statement and its converse are true or false. So is the original conditional statement true? Is the converse true or false? If it is false, remember there should exist a counterexample. If you can't think of a counterexample, then it is true. On the back, 15 through 20 talks about converse. 21 is talking about converse. On number letter C, I'm going to tell you the converse. I'm going to have to do it on a separate video. Sorry, guys, we're just out of time here. 
or you can just pause it and read it. Looky there, read that.